God has done some incredible things, even in just the last week. Yes. He's done things. I mean, she's experienced a lot of freedom in the Lord, but um, let's start. I know you don't want to hear me. You want to hear what Kate has to say. <laughs> so uh, how'd this all start or what's been going on? I've been like struggling with the whole freedom. I thought it was something easy. It happened overnight, but I've learned that it's a process. Mm -hmm. um, and it really took effect when we were on our beach trip. Um, I found a lot of myself uh, with this. Um, I wasn't listening to him. I was like, okay, I can do this. You know, boom, I'm healed. No. He literally had to take every root out of me that I didn't even know was there and fill it with what he wanted, not what Kate wanted or my husband or my kids or my friends. It had to be what he wanted. Um, and then that in the beach trip, it was just like, it was mind blowing. Like I went and this is day seven of not smoking cigarettes. Um, so he has healed me from that, which I just knew I wasn't going to because I wasn't physically, mentally, ready to let that go. Like that was my comfort, that was my stress reliever. And when I went um, on Wednesday and I had already put it in my mind, I'm not gonna smoke no more. You know, he's gonna heal me from this. He literally took everything away. He took my desire for smoke. Yes, I was a little aggravated and I was gonna pay $2 for my complaint that we have set up for the beach trip. And I was just gonna give you a $20 bill because I knew it was coming, but he didn't even do that. Like I didn't even need that money cause I did not have a desire. So, you know, he freed me from that. Um, well, let just me just everything. say for those that don't know, <laughs> annually we do a River Women's Beach Retreat and it's planned a year ahead of time. And the last year you were expecting, so this is your first year, you know, not yeah. having the little one there and, uh, and we, it's a real peaceful trip. We go just seeking the Lord and enjoying fellowship. And what she's talking about is that if you complain, you have to pay $2. And that keeps us from, uh, complaint really stirs things Accountability. up. Accountability. And it's hard to get freedom when you're in the middle mm -hmm. of chaos. And so <laughs> she's just like, let me complain. Here's the 20 bucks. <laughs> she thinks she's prepared, but... I know you started that morning, right? You just started, mm -hmm. you just, you knew God was going to do something. You knew yes. he was going to take the cigarettes. Yes. Like and I had anxiety the night before because I was like, I'm not going to take any, let's just smoke our last cigarette, you know, and then I'll go on the trip. I'll have eight hours. I'll have my sisters to, you know, support me on that. I woke up at 2.30 because I didn't even want to go to bed. I was so excited and I was like, okay, let's smoke a cigarette. We left at 4.45 and... It was a mess because that's all I constantly think about. I was, I just kept saying, God, you know, just take it from me. I know like I've been on drugs, alcohol, and it's, it was easy. It was easy to quit, but smoking was like horrible. Like, I think I would have rather had 20 million kids than try and quit smoking again. But you know, it was just, if you're ready to give something up and you want and strive and so thirsty to be free, he can do it. I mean, he did it on numerous things. And so you're talking about roots and the Lord removing things you don't even know. And that's something we talk about often because there's a lot of times lies you believe, you don't know you believe. There's things that you're hanging on to that you don't realize you need to let go of until the Lord shows you. So tell me what that was like, finding that out and how God did that. Well, I kept, I kept getting in the word. Um, like I read the Bible, but I was not like hardcore, hungry and thirsty for them. Well, when you're in distress or whatever and you're trying to let that go like we were talking about the whole arm length it's like you have to focus on what he's saying you you hunger for what he's saying show me god because i'm starting to get aggravated because i don't have a cigarette or you know show me what what you want me to see not what i'm trying to see or what the world's trying to show me how to do um so that was a lot of it and i just threw my hands up and i was just like I'm not smoking, but I'm still not hearing from you. What am I doing wrong? And so then I started to search in the, um, in the word and ask my sisters, you know, how do you get through um, a situation that you know you need to be going through, 
but the world is still doing that. And you, I just feel like you have to be constant in that word. You have to seek him like he's your best friend. You have to be hungry for him. Um, and that's, that's what got me through the, that smoking part mm-hmm. of that. Did you have any withdrawals? I would say the first day, like the, the trip up there, because like last year, I was the only one that smoked, mm-hmm. you know, everybody else wasn't, they weren't smoking. So it was a lot easier. But after hearing stories from um, my sisters on, you know, you really don't need it, you don't do that, Satan tried to. So I would just begin to pray. The four girls that was in my room or in, my, in the car just kept praying. Then we had some in the van that was praying because I was like, listen, I'm breaking down. I'm starting to get aggravated. You know, I want one so bad. Why can't I just have one and then pray and then it'll be all right. But it wasn't, they stayed firm and they're like, Kate, you can do this. You know, he is, he's wanting to take it from you don't pick it up. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think a lot, of, a lot of times people have a problem with is they want to drop something at his feet, but then they want to pick it up. Mm-hmm. And you just can't do that because if you truly want freedom, it's so much better when, you're, when you get freedom. Now there's another girl that got set free from smoking, but she was not in your room and she was not in your vehicle. Yes. We'll make that clear. So you're kind of just hanging on alone there. And then I noticed one night, I don't know if it was with the cigarettes or if it was while you're trying to say, okay, God, anything between you and me, anything you want to take Take out, you looked a little frustrated and then you disappeared. And we're like, we need to find where Kate is. I have to tell you what, I thought, oh my goodness, if she is outside smoking, I wish she would just say, this is something I'm going to do instead of hide it. That's what my thought was. And I was like, if she's given up, I don't want her to be ashamed. I want to just still encourage her. But no, that's not what it was. You're outside worshiping your brains out, connecting with God. And when you came back in, you know, we can say this is how we fight our battles until a battle comes and we're little wimpies. (laughs) You went out and you fought your battle with the Lord. And when you came in, your whole attitude, your whole look, your demeanor was completely different. What happened out there? Uh, I gave it all to him. Like, when you have nothing left and you feel like that battle is about to get you, like your flesh is about to take over, you're not strong enough, you're not worthy enough for him. If you just cry out to him and you believe it with everything in you, he answers. And he told me, he says, Kate, you will never be free unless you have peace with yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. And it was Mm -hmm. like, once that happened, it just, he hugged me. He hugged me and he whispered and he was like, I love you, Kate. And you're going to make it through this. That's all I needed you to do is to surrender all. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's that easy. Just surrender all and know that this world is out to get you. You know, Satan is out to get you. He wants everything in you. He will throw every distraction at you. But when you focus on what you're supposed to do, and I was tired, Lisa. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was tired. I had nothing else to do. You know, so I said, all right, God, I'm here. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to strive for you. There's going to be no one other than you. This is it, because my, my addiction with smoking was stopping me from everything. I was using it as an excuse, as in a clutch, but when I took everything out that I was focused on and just called out to him and worshiped him, that's all we're supposed to do is worship him. When we do, he hit me like, like nobody's business. Well, what did it mean to be at peace with yourself? What did that include? Um, well, I'm a people pleaser. I tried to take on everything. I tried to fix everything. Um, I had shame. I had doubt. I had guilt. Um, my past experiences, worried about the future. You know, all those bondages and chains can hold you down and it can stop you from everything. It can stop you from giving blessings to others. And, you know, I was tired of that. And I swear when he did that, I felt like I was, I mean, I might not look 150 pounds lighter, Mm -hmm. but I felt 150 pounds, 50 pounds lighter. 
That's awesome. Yes, Glory. <laughs> <laughs> you were changed. Well, so what is the difference between, well, let me say this one thing, that we often, when we have a bondage, there's a lot of shame, but cigarettes was not the problem. Those roots were the yes. problem, which caused hanging on to that. Yes. You know, it's not the drugs or the gossip or the overeating. It's what's being on it. We actually usually are ashamed of the surface things, but literally if you clean up the bottom, if you clean it's like up like an iceberg. You you can only see the tip of it, but mm -hmm. once you clean out the bottom, mm -hmm. it's a whole new ball game. You'll find stuff that you didn't even realize or mm -hmm. forgot about like I did. Well, tell me what it's like like pre going. It's been a week ago tomorrow when we left. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on your freedom. I'm so excited <laughs> Thank for you. you. Okay, and so, and then tell me what the transformation, the thought process is, anything that's changed already? Everything's changed. Like, I'll be walking and like I'm, I'm, I keep saying, God, give me opportunities to spread your word, to talk to somebody that might um, need just a word of comfort, you know, encouragement, something like that. When I first started this, I'm not gonna lie, it was up to two days I wasn't even gonna go on the women's trip because Satan had attacked and said, you're not, you don't have friends there, this whole COVID thing, they don't like you, wrong. Satan will use the stupidest stuff, not, I mean, just stupid, like your shoes don't match, don't go on this beach trip. Mm -hmm. You don't have this cool towel like everybody else does, don't go on this. But that's when you have to wear the shoes that you're supposed to be wearing, not other people's shoes. Mm -hmm. And, um, I wasn't expecting, like my main focus was the smoking and got so much else out of it. Mm -hmm. Like everything, like I am a whole different person. Like I can't wait to tell everybody about God. Like he has such a free gift for you, salvation, and mm -hmm. people make it so hard to accept that. Mm -hmm. And it's just so much better after you actually receive it. Mm -hmm. You know, How that long it's have just, you been saved? Well, since 1998. Okay. But I was what you call a lukewarm Christian. Yes, that's Don't a big do no-no. Don't do that. Don't you, try that at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it will make you miserable. It'll make you crazy. Um, it'll be constant chaos in your head. And it literally was driving me nuts because I was like, oh, I love God. Oh, but he's mad at me for this. Oh, he does. It was constant battle, constant battle. And it doesn't have to be like that. Now, we did a baptism in the ocean, which was pretty yeah. awesome. But do you care to share, because I think a lot of people have the chatter in their head or the, the voice, you know, that just is accusing all the time. But you gave the testimony about the sounds and, and what the Lord came in and did. Can you share about that? Yes. Um, so, Satan is sneaky. Um, he, could, he can change his voice to where it'll sound like a sister, a mom, a brother, your best friend, and repeat and repeat. And once you keep repeating, mm -hmm. people tend to, to start remembering and, and believing that. Mm -hmm. So my head was so cloudy and I was like, I was double-minded. I couldn't re you know, figure out what was going on. When I got in that place to where I was like, I'm just done, I can't figure out who's who anymore, I can't even think for myself, I sat and I was quiet, and when you, when you give it all to God, his voice might be really soft, but it's really loud. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm the person that needs the big yellow signs that says, hey, Kate, I'm over mm -hmm. here. This is what I want to give you. This is what you are, you know, like that. So when I was being baptized in the ocean, I heard it was really cool, and I so wish I could have been there, mm -hmm. but I was like, I was <laughs> not even there. At one point, I heard talking, and it was two different voices, but it was like, all the bad thoughts that was in my ha my head was being pulled out. So one, when it said like, if it was like my mother, and my mother would never say this, but it was like her voice. If you, you're not worthy enough. So it was like, you are not worthy enough was being pulled out of my mind. Mm -hmm. But in the other part, 
you are worthy. You are a child of God. You are my daughter. You are amazing. You're a warrior. So all these good ones were going in because that's what God wanted. God wanted me to know that that's who he is, not all these other ones that were negative or have been clouding my mind and stopping me from doing what he wants me to do was gone. It was like, it was, I can't even explain it. It was amazing. Do you know that you started repeating what that other voice was saying? You began saying, I am worthy. Did you know that? Girl, I wasn't there. I mean, I was there, but I wasn't <laughs> You I began wasn't there. to speak that and I was like, I don't know what's going on right now. Cause everybody, when you get freedom and when the Lord takes out those roots and puts in the truth, everyone has their own story. So like, if you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna go to the ocean and God's gonna do this. God wants his own story for you. And so you began to say that. And what happened was, is as the truth came in, you began to pronounce the truth. And that is what actually fortifies that truth so that the lies can't come back in. Amen. But Amen. it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm soaked. <laughs> okay, so you've come back and then we have everyday life. Just tell me the viewpoint of what everyday life looks like compared to what it looked like pre Jesus doing his Luke 418 thing. Amen. Um, automatic attack, 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 attack. It's like I didn't have my sisters around me. I was going back to my old routines. The temptation of smoking, temptation of um, cussing, um, everything was just coming, coming at me, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was like, this, this can't happen. You know, I want, I, I made a promise. I said, listen, when I come back from the trip, I will be changed. Mm -hmm. I won't accept nothing less. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know that the battle's gonna come mm -hmm. as soon as I get back to my old routines, but I have to be strong and know that where I was is not where I'm going. Mm -hmm. You know, that's left in the past. You can't go back. Um, and, but Satan will do that. Satan will bring all them little things up. Oh, you weren't baptized. You weren't doing any of this. Yes, yes. He saved me, delivered me, made me whole. You're not fixing that. You're not doing that. So, I mean, it's been a constant battle ever since we got back. Mm -hmm. But you have to just keep looking at where you were and where you're going and know that you just keep your eyes focused on him and your heart full of him mm -hmm. that you're going to make it through. I always say it's a lot easier to do a battle outside in than inside out. Yes, definitely. So you've got all the junk in there beforehand and your, your junk in fighting, out fighting mm -hmm. in, it's very difficult. Yes, the battle still goes on, but you've got this, you're shored up, you've cleaned up, yes. all that's gone and so it's just coming and you can, the Bible says, submit to God, resist the enemy and he will flee. Amen. Absolutely has to do that. But when I saw you today, because I haven't seen you since, you know, we parted, uh, I can still tell there's a major difference. Yes. The joy is there. Yeah, I didn't have praise that before. on your lips. The peace is there. And one of the things we talked about on the retreat, our, our theme was peace. And the shoes of peace that the Lord gives us in the armor is so important. And we discovered that when the, the enemy will attack to get the peace, so you'll take your shoes off, your battle shoes off. Which makes your foundation shaky. And then, then he can come in and fight you. Mm -hmm. And our saying was, you can't make me take my shoes off. You can't make That's me right. take my peace off. And I think for a lot of the women, they experienced, some of the women came back to accusations. Some of the women came back to old habits knocking at the door. And for the most part, um, there were some people fussing yesterday and I just wanted to get it in the middle of it. And I was like, no, you know what? Facebook, you cannot make me take my shoes off. Can't take I am my joy. not entering into chaos when the Lord has promised me peace. And that's how we keep our freedom, I think. Yes, you gotta be planted on that rock and not uh, quicksand. So what's next for you? I'm gonna spread the word, <laughs> spread the word. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, find out what my purpose is. I know he's got something big. And I know that the time is crucial now. So now is the time to rise up. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, I just want to tell everybody about Jesus, you know? <laughs> He's like, I, I thought I was like awesome and on fire, but I, I had my dry spells and that's what hurt my feelings. And I know if it hurts my feelings, it hurts his feelings. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do that no more. Mm -hmm. I want to be on fire where you can see me from a mile away. Amen.
Let's Definitely. do it. And you know, that's what the world needs. They need to see a real gospel, a yes. powerful gospel, a live gospel that really can change lives. And I'm sitting here with Kate today with a life changed. Amen well done. to that. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else that you want to mention or share before I let you pray for people? Ooh. <laughs> um... I would just say that, you know, with COVID around here, it's got people a little shaky and scared. We can't, we can't be, we can't be scared. Time is short mm -hmm. and I really feel that um, we're gonna see God come and, you know, he's just getting his little ducks in the row and I really think that we just need to press forward um, and tell as many people as we can, you know, what, what he can do for them because the time is coming and we need to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. That's true. When it comes to the COVID thing, there's so many divided um, opinions. Like when you say don't fear, listen, there are people that are unnecessarily fearful. Oh, yeah, Not definitely. just like tormented. There are some people that are caution. Cautious doesn't have to equal fear. It doesn't. Right. So we, we're just not going to be critical of anyone, you know, when they're being cautious, when they're trying to protect people. But when we see the real fear that has gripped people's hearts, man, fear is a horrible thing mm -hmm. to live in. It's very tormenting. Yeah. And I do think that um, the enemy has is working through this to stir up fear, to stir up Yeah, that's, a, that's an easy thing for him to do. When you have just even, like you were saying, caution versus fear, when you have, um, when you're cautious, you still kind of know what's going on. When you have fear, you have no idea what you're doing. You are like, oh my gosh, you know, there's that, there's that, let's not do that, let's pull away, let's get all the toilet paper in the world, let's do, it's not gonna matter. Mm -hmm. You have to be in the word to understand that you can be cautious and have Satan attack you and you can be strong enough to overcome it. If you have fear and the chaos in your head, you are all over the place, so it's easier for him to slide in and just make things 10 times worse. Mm -hmm. Which that brings me, you know, freedom, we are guaranteed freedom from everything that torments and fear of death is a huge thing right now. And do you know that you don't have to be afraid of death? I used to be just thinking too. about dying. Oh, yeah. I would just be so tormented and the fear would cover me. But you know, I have no fear of death. Now I'm not crazy about the way by which that will eventually happen, mm -hmm. you know? And I don't want anyone to pass of COVID. I don't want it, anyone to, to be difficult. But still, even if someone's sick, to have the spirit of death, fear of death, is a very tormenting thing. Yeah. And that's an inside out job. Mm -hmm. And so I can tell you that the Lord, if you call upon him and say, God, I don't want to be fearful of death. I don't want to have fear tormenting me. Rescue me. Show me any roots and get this out of me. He really will do it. Just like that. Yeah. Amen. All he you got to do is call on him. That's if you don't know what you're saying, just say Jesus. You know, he knows your heart inside and out. And if you don't know what you're saying or what you need to ask for, like I was, I was crazy. I just knew I wasn't expecting to get baptized. I was not going to do it. I didn't need to. I always felt like that's where I was at. But there was one thing that I was trying to figure out that was stopping me from getting baptized. Because I've been baptized before, mm -hmm. you know, the, I think in 98 was a true baptism. Like I was so scared. I didn't want to go to hell, you know, but I was young, mm -hmm. you know, and then I got baptized in our, in our baptism and I knew that it was time to get that. Mm -hmm. But when I got baptized in the ocean, I, it was a whole, it was, it was everything. Mm -hmm. It was like, this is what it's supposed to feel like. But I had one thing that I was trying to, that almost kept me from being baptized and being free in the Lord. And so, I mean, I, I think that's what I would say. Even if you have, you're not perfect. You just have to know where you're at in the Lord. If you have a relationship with God, that's awesome. But you can't be a lukewarm Christian and only hear how God is. You have to experience what he's doing for you in your life. Mm -hmm. So if you have like a, a boundary or, any, or a bonding of anything like that, that's keeping you from that. And you don't know what it is. Just, just tell them, say, God, you know, what's up. <laughs> you know me, you know every hair that's on my head. 
-hmm. whatever it is, just show me. And it's, I just, it's amazing. It is so amazing. Well, one of the keys, what you said is like, you didn't have anything else. You were desperate. It's like mm -hmm. this God, I know that when my daughter got set free, it was like, God, if you don't help me, nobody else can. Yeah. Those are the, those are the moments where the Lord will come in. That's the Christ. You're he holding is. nothing back from him. He holds nothing back from you. And how we did that, we did different ways. We, I was trying to listen to the Lord with the baptism. Yeah. And with you, I was like, here's what's gonna happen. As faith rises up in you for God to do the things that you want him to do, you're just going to go down and dunk. And you're gonna do that until that releasing. And that's, faith rose up and you just began to declare that. And that, we didn't even do the the backwards thing. It was basically <laughs> like, you know, naming the leopard dipping seven times. It was by faith, just going for that. And then God coming in and doing that great miracle. It was wonderful. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. Okay. So as we end today, thank you for joining us. And there will be a, um, there's a number down on the bottom. If you would like prayer, you can text a prayer request there. And uh, Pastor Emily will be praying over you. If you would like to talk to someone about freedom or have any questions, we'd love to talk with you. And you can uh, text, uh, please contact me about this and give your phone number or email address. We would be happy to have a team member uh, contact you, pray with you, uh, or give you wisdom or whatever that it takes. We'd love to do that because when a person gets set free, the reason she's so zealous about other people knowing Jesus is it causes a fire in you. You're like, oh my goodness, God can do this. Yeah. And you don't wanna take your light and put it under a bushel. No, you, you want the world it. to see it. So that's what yeah. that's like. That's why we are so excited because this freedom we've experienced isn't just secluded to these two chicks or those on the beach trip. That's right, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. If you know Jesus, this freedom's for you. If you don't know Jesus, you can know him, and this freedom is for you. So Boom. go ahead and pray over those. Boom, as Kate Boom. says. <laughs> go ahead and just pray as the Lord leads you, and I'll agree with you for those watching. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you so much for all that you've done for us. Yeah. Lord, I just thank you for sending your one son on that cross, Lord, to take all of our sins away, Lord. I just ask that you be with the ones that may be confused um, or struggling with who you are, Lord. Um, I just ask that you give them peace of mind, Lord. I just ask that you, you let them know that the bondages that they have or them, them heavy chains that they have, Lord, they can be broke. They can be broke with one yeah. breath from you, Lord. That's right. I just ask that you be with the ones that you just ignite their fire, Lord, even if it might be slow or small right now, Lord. I just ask that you breathe on them, Lord. Let that yes. fire night, Lord. The ones that might be with you, Lord, but feel like they're struggling um, on what to do next, Lord, I just ask that they cry out your name. Just cry out Jesus, Lord, that you will save them. Um, I just ask that you heal our nation, Lord. Yes. Anyone that is um, struggling with this COVID, Lord, I just ask that you give them extra air in their lungs, Lord. Give them a peace of mind that lets them know that you are taking care of them. Um, Lord, I just Thank ask you. that you uh, be with the ones that... Um might be struggling with anxiety, yes. um, Lord, or depression, Lord. Yes. Those are not of you, Lord. And I just ask that Thank you, you um, cast them uh, at the feet of you, Lord. Um, they are not welcome. And I just thank you for all the blessings that you are going to do, Lord. And uh, wake up our dry bones, yeah. Lord. Yeah. Um, we are your children, Lord. And um, I just ask that you be with us and what we're going to yeah. do for you, Lord, and uh, rise up in this situation. Um, anybody that is out there and um, struggling with doubt, um, I cast that at the feet of Jesus, Lord, and just let them know that um, you are here for them and um, they can call on you whenever they need to. Amen. You know, if you're Ooh. still with us, I, I, I'm gonna share this. Not everybody will stay till the end of the prayer, but I was reminded of something. When you talked about the shame, you know, just of smoking and that, how many years did you smoke? Oh, a long time. A long Since I was time. like 12. Okay. Um, I had a friend of mine who was, oh man, she was just tremendous. She was anointed, but she had a secret sin. 
She was, mm-hmm. she was an alcoholic secretly. No one knew. Like outside of, of course, her children knew. She would go to church and she would worship, beautiful worshiper. She would come home and begin drinking. And it was so shameful for her. She actually got cirrhosis of the liver. But she hid that even, that she, she actually was in, in stages and was passing. And she hid that from her church sisters because she still was so ashamed of it. And when I, I actually got the, I was like, are, you can't be talking about this woman. And um, they said at any point you could go into a certain area in her home and she had all of this liquor. And when um, one of the ladies tried to visit her, she was like, get away, get away, push, still pushing away. And so shame for that addiction covered her. I still cannot believe it. You know, I don't think you would think that I had a drug addiction, but it would be as shocked as you would be. Yeah. Like, let's say if someone, if I died tomorrow and someone said that I had a cocaine addiction, would that be hard for you to believe? Very much so. Okay. It's that much unbelief that I had toward this woman. And so, uh, my biggest thing was I was so heartbroken that she couldn't trust anyone with a secret. And the fact is, shame keeps us from getting our miracle. She didn't have to die and leave her children. Mm -mm. Didn't have to. Yet she chose to keep this locked away. So I just want to say, if you have a secret bondage, a secret sin, ask the Lord who you can trust to help come along. Because as you know, I'm going to be telling this story Wednesday night. I'm ministering here. And I got lost at sea on our trip. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) on a flamingo (laughs) yes tune in Wednesday night for that but um, there was a point when I looked out and thought I'm not coming back from this I couldn't help myself Kate I couldn't it's instant I feel it I had to have help to do that and so my friend she could not help herself and so if you are in a situation you cannot help yourself the Lord will send help. I mean, he will help, but there are times that he will send reinforcements in. You have and, to listen. Yeah, listen and uh, accept that help. And if there is a body, you don't have to live in that torment. And we could be celebrating you. You know, smoking was a shameful thing for Kate. She was very ashamed to, to be smoking, yeah. especially around godly people. At people or like, people oh no. yeah do they smell it on me yeah I could yeah. smell it <laughs> but you do not smell of it today Amen. <laughs> but uh now that she's free Kate can easily come in and say hey you know I smoked that was a bondage mm-hmm. hey I was hearing the voices that didn't exist but now she doesn't have that and we just want to partner with you and say man it, you don't have to live the rest of your life this way you don't have to live this way And it's not that we want to say, oh, we want to just know what everybody's sin is. That's not the case. It's not that we want Mm -hmm. to be gossipy. But here's what do. Say, God, I can't help myself. I'm out to sea. There's no way to get back in. But show me who I need to contact. Or God, just rescue me. Send in reinforcements. And he will do that very thing. When all you have left is him, he always shows up. He just always does. And even if, he, if it, even if it doesn't happen right then, keep pressing it. Mm-hmm. Keep reading your word because he will mm-hmm. send one. It might be a pizza boy. Mm-hmm. It might be someone in a store. But you can't just ask for help and then leave it at that and say, okay, God, where are you at? You have to keep pursuing that. I felt like I needed to say that. Mm -hmm. You have to keep pursuing. It might be tomorrow that he sends someone. It might be a week from somewhere, you know, from then. Just keep pressing in it. True. God is creating his very own story with you. And it's not like you hadn't gotten freedom from certain things before. Right. Because you've been getting freedom all along, but it's like that he keeps showing and yeah. keeps showing we're never going to be perfect mm-hmm. we're never i mean he's he's going to constantly be working on us but when you think that you're like oh yes awesome i'm ready Mm-mm, girl he's going to work on me every day every day there's going to be something yeah and i day. love that freedom is a whole process you said that yeah. when at the beginning of this mm-hmm. As far as I don't have any vices that I'm aware of, I'm still working on some things, but now I'll, I will just allow the Lord to say, okay, God, I don't even know me, but you do. 
pick something out. Let's start working on that together. Yeah. Because what will, what will happen is, is you begin to partner with him in this process and you see his beauty. Yes. You know, something that I did on the trip is I made a U-turn. It was a legal U-turn, but I didn't see the door. I didn't see the road right. And so instead of coming back around, Lisa Piper ended up in a construction area <laughs> playing chicken with a... Road closed. Pastor, if you're watching, <laughs> closed. Mute your button for just a minute. And so I didn't see it. And the, the women in the back, they're like, what are you doing? And so I'm, you know, I get back onto the road. And thankfully, the other, the caravan did not follow me. Well. <laughs> I think Tina said she started yelling, don't follow her. Don't follow her. Yeah. And so um, I came back out. And here's a change. Like, when you go through deliverance and freedom, God will do things that you don't know he's done. Mm -hmm. That's why I say write down the benefits. Like when you come home, suddenly I'm not irritated when this happens. Write down the benefit. Because eventually the enemy will say, well, God didn't do anything. And you can bring out your benefit sheets. Well, something that changed in me used to before, if someone made fun of my driving or if I did something wrong and it was exposed, there would be like this shame and wounding. Yep, that and, wall uh, starts yeah. to build back up. And Kate, there was nothing. I laughed at it myself. I was glad Glory. we survived. Because yes. I think the uh, dump truck could have won over me. But um, I, there wasn't there, and I've even made fun of it myself. And I by no means would have mentioned it, you know, on live Facebook that I did that dumb thing. But the wounding's not there. Yeah. And I, when I realized that, I was like, oh, God, you did it. And I wasn't even looking when you did it. I love how that happens. Yes. Or like used to, somebody would say something corrective to me. And I would just, I would take it, but it would just wound my soul. But that doesn't happen anymore. People are able to correct me. And so I'm going to a new level with my tongue, you know, mm -hmm. speaking proper things. But Speak life. Yeah. So we're all in a process. Some of us just have more chunks taken out. And I had a word for a woman not long ago. I will share this. And um, actually, when I gave it to her, I was like, oh, man, that applies to me, too. That's how it works, though. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've definitely found that. Like, you might have a word for somebody, and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, no, should I tell them? Should I tell them? And then you're like, all right, God, I got you. Mm -hmm. That was for me, too. You know what the word was? You're going to love this. Uh-oh. You are not in an easy bake oven. You keep asking to be done. You keep asking to be out. I have you in a kiln, Ooh. not an easy bake oven. Because we are not little value like what you find in an easy bake oven. We are a vessel that he's creating of honor. That's a good word. Isn't that good? That's good. I That's took really that for good. myself. So I'm going to kill, not an easy bake oven. I'm going to take that too, okay? Yeah. Y'all can take that. That's yeah. free. That's free. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us today. And Kate, thank you for You're coming very in. Welcome. I appreciate it so much. Definitely. All right. See you later.